what are you trying to do you understand like bruh come on you're black speak the language zulu where are you going to go eh in america they speak zulu canada maybe you speak zulu zimbabwe Dololo. what's good what's happening what's up everybody thank you so much for joining me today my name is Makhale. you're going to go with contagious energies how you guys doing welcome to today's video where we are debunking assumptions and telling the truth about congolese people living in south africa now if you are like many people out there i'm sure you've heard a lot of negative stereotypes about police people living in south africa and in today's video I will be sharing with you guys some information that will challenge those assumptions. Okay, now without any further ado, let's get into the video. But before we get into this video, please do consider subscribing below, turning on the notification bell so that you are notified every time we post a video. You must be asking yourself, now why would I want to subscribe to this channel? Because on this channel, we talk everything marriage from intercultural marriages to blending families, relationships, and a whole lot more, and you do not want to miss out. So click that bell notification so that you are notified every time we post. First, let's talk about the Congolese community in South Africa. Now, in South Africa, I'm not sure how many people there are, how many Congolese people there are, but Google said there are about 30,000 Congolese people in South Africa. These Congolese people obviously are dealing with a lot when it comes to discrimination, lack of access to public services, and limited economic opportunity, right? So we all know that people who leave their countries to come to South Africa, they are coming for a better life. I feel like the most assumption, like the top of everything, is the one where they talk about how Congolese people do not contribute to South African society. You are very, 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 oh my God. very, very wrong. There are many Congolese people who are highly educated and have really good job, especially in the healthcare department. There are a lot of doctors who are here from the DRC. So healthcare, education, and even a whole lot of arts, there are a lot of uh, Congolese people. Now, yes, maybe you see your neighbor who's a car guard, or you see your other neighbor who's a tailor, or you see another person that you know who hands out papers. Now, all of a sudden, you are basing your whole assumptions about Congolese people based off the people you know. No, they are highly, they are highly respected jobs that are occupied by a lot of Congolese people. Like where I stay, there is a hospital called Bopilong. Dude, not even 50. I think 80% of the doctors there are all foreigners. 80% are foreigners and about 50% are all Congolese doctors. And I know that because I'm Congolese and <laughs> so, hello, doctor, I'm sick today. <laughs> So you get what I mean? Like, so this thing of saying, no, hey, you guys come here, you're not educated, and you come and you'll take this, and you'll take jobs, and you'll take wah, 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 wah. No, guys, people come here. Yes, maybe the, the documentation they bring has to be translated, but once it's translated, they are all, dude, there are car guards who studied civil engineering in, in, in Congo. There are lecturers who were teaching uh, civil engineering and doctorates busy with these minor jobs you understand but that doesn't mean that they are not educated or the fact that one day when the papers are translated into english that they will not getting they won't get a high paid jobs so all these people in healthcare education and arts and whatever you call it all the lecturers you see in the universities and wherever you see them all of them you must know they are contributing to taxes and yet you might say yeah tete, tete, but i mean they're 30 you said there are thirty thousand congolese people you cannot tell me thirty thousand of them are uh, doctors Thirty thousand might not be doctors but you would be surprised that a huge percentage of that of that number is contributing to taxes or to south african society in some way or form foreigners or congolese people come to africa and then they don't have jobs then they create crime and wada 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 okay so firstly i'm not saying that so our Congolese people do not steal or do not contribute to the crimes happening in South Africa. But if you're looking at percentage wise, it makes sense because we are in South Africa that most crimes take place or are done by South African people. Another assumption is that Congolese people don't speak English and we don't like to learn other people or African other um south african languages okay that is not true i don't think it's, it's true okay speaking english obviously we come from a country where um french is dominant and swahili and whatever other languages we speak in the drc right so we come to africa and now we're trying to learn 
English because you know once you've learned English, you can travel anywhere in the world and you will, you know, you'll be able to communicate. So now you get South Africa and you're thinking, which one should I learn first? Should I learn uh, English or should I learn Zulu or should I learn Sotswana or should I learn this? As well? Like for you, it, it wouldn't make sense for you to learn Zulu because yes, that might work in KZN, but what if you come to Mavikeng? What if you go to Limpopo? I mean, you can't use Zulu there as much as you can use it in KZN. So I think they focus more on learning English because they know, okay, English you need it at work. You can't go, you, you can go to work and speak with Panagalo, but you can't go to work and speak with Panagalo English. Oh, does that even exist? Does that even exist? You get what I mean? So I think the preference is that let's learn English first. Once we've learned English, then we will learn other languages. And also because most people don't live in Kasi, like most Congolese people don't live in townships. We all know because of xenophobic attacks and discrimination and amongst other things. That's the reason why they live in towns and yeah, you know. So in those areas where they live, they mostly speak English you know, where they go to work or whatever. So maybe that's the reason why. It's not to say they're arrogant or they think they're better. They come to a country, you live 10 years and you're not speaking, you're not speaking the language. It's just that if you look at where you live, you understand the environment they're living and what they're exposed to, it's not a lot of people or it's not a lot of foreigners that are exposed to the language, right? So please, it's not arrogant. It's not that we don't want to learn here. Yeah? We think we are better. There's no way, you understand? Because I know like even here where I live, when I go and I don't know so Anna, like the furthest I can go is hello, how are you? Good things and you good. I'm looking for, and then if I'm looking for for bread shop, bread milk, common things I know. But if I'm looking for other things where I do, I'm still trying to learn the language. Then they look at me like, what are you trying to do? You understand? Like, bro, come on, you black, speak the language. But yeah, I'm black. In South Africa, there's 11, there's 11 official languages. What makes you think I'm gonna speak Zatuana? Okay, but yeah, just putting it out there. It's not arrogance. It's just a matter of in the process of learning or if you it's either or if you had to choose a language they just prefer english because with english you can you know whichever country you go to you can speak english but zulu where are you going to go eh in america they speak zulu canada maybe you speak zulu zimbabwe so i spoke to a whole lot of south africans before making this video and i got the same thing that they say about nigerians Ghanaians, zimbabweans are the same thing they think about congolese people right so congolese people are stealing their women congolese people are busy doing drugs congolese people on witchcraft when i heard witchcraft i say congolese person witchcraft in south africa where women are burning pads and washing them so they don't get lawyered. Never. No way, no. I was like, no ma'am, no ham, no turkey. Tell me crime, I take it. Tell me you don't contribute to society. I witching? Witching the craft? I stand to be corrected. I stand to be corrected. But that assumption that, yeah, Congolese people come here and witch us and they say their grandmothers are, are strong. And if you point, if you go and try and check them at the Sangoma, you find yourself in a mirror. That one I cannot comment on. <laughs> that one I cannot comment on. Or maybe they just say that just to scare people around. <laughs> I hope that this video has challenged some of the assumptions that you guys had about Congolese people living in South Africa and also see people in a different light. Don't just make assumptions based, based on a small group of people that you are surrounded with. There's always a bigger picture. So yes, please leave a comment in the comment section below. What do you think about this video? Are there, other some, are there some other assumptions you think about Congolese people that you can leave in the comments? And I will definitely make a part two. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to share it, like it, leave a comment. And yeah, I'm out until next time. My name is Tim Akhele. You're going to go with Contagious Energies. Mwah. No, this was